Hello, I'm Marco and welcome to my home kitchen. This year's Pride Month recipe is a tossed salad of beet tops and beet bottoms with herbs and a sherry vinaigrette. Let's spend time with Marco, but the food is the star, so it's probably worth sharing. It is the perfect recipe to take to barbecues with your conservative relatives all summer long. It's super easy, it's super tasty, it comes together in 10 minutes and you can keep it in the fridge for a week. This is a super simple salad. You need one bunch of beets. These beets are pretty big. They've been going to the gym. They're getting their squats in. So I've only got three here, but you might need up to five. One bunch of parsley, mint, dill. Because this is a very gay salad, you also want to add some nuts. I'm using roasted pistachios, but you could also use walnuts. First, I'm going to make the dressing. If you have a jar left over from jam, you can use it. It's going to be way easier to shake than uh, trying to stir it. The ratio for the salad dressing is pretty acidic. Uh, the beets are raw in the salad, so you really need that acid to come through. So start with one third of a cup of sherry vinegar. Add two tablespoons of olive oil, two tablespoons of Dijon mustard. You can actually use any kind of mustard. I've made this with grainy mustard. It's good anyway. Add a teaspoon of salt. That's a couple big pinches. Some fresh black pepper. And a teaspoon of sugar. Throw the lid on and give this a shake. That's the salad dressing. Next, you want to prepare the beets. And for that, it is important to practice safe salads. Beets are very messy. It is a fact of life. I really recommend you wear gloves when you are preparing beets. And just like other situations, you want to lay down a sheet of parchment to protect your surface because the beets will stain it and it's going to be really annoying to wash later. The first thing you want to do is cut the beet tops from the beet bottoms. These are going to need to be washed really well because they can have a lot of dirt and any tops you're putting in your mouth, you want to make sure that they're really clean. So these are going to get tossed in a bowl of cool water. The other benefit of cleaning these in a bowl of cool water is if your tops go soft and limp, they will firm right back up and the tops will be ready to use in the salad in just a couple minutes. So give them a bit of a shake and set this aside while you cut the beets and all of the dirt is going to sink to the bottom. Now you want to peel the beet bottoms. You can wash your bottoms before or after you peel them. Sometimes the bottoms are a little bit hairy and that can hold on to a lot of dirt. So I recommend you peel these first and then wash them. I'm gonna take these over to the sink and give them a quick rinse, and this is gonna go in the compost. Still with your gloves on, you want to use the coarse side of a box grater, and hold the beet so that the longest side is running against the grater, so you get really long grated pieces of beets. I definitely recommend you wear an apron or a black shirt while you are doing this. That's all of the beets grated. The parchment is super handy here too, because you can use it to move the beets into your serving bowl without making another mess. Beet tops taste vaguely like spinach or Swiss chard. You can actually use them anywhere that you would use spinach or Swiss chard. For the beet tops, you can use a salad spinner. I'm just going to use a clean dish cloth. Lay them out on the surface to dry. If any of your tops have lesions, that is a sign they should not go in your mouth and this should go to the compost for medical treatment. You can see all of the dirt sank to the bottom and these are super clean. I'm going to roll up the towel. Rolling them up is a gentle way to dry them out. And if you store them in the fridge like this, they'll stay fresh for longer. The tops are going to be cut into strips so they have a similar final texture to the bottoms. I'm gonna show you how to do a technique called chiffonade, which is fun to say and very fabulous. You're going to stack your beet tops. Depending on how big your tops are, it might take two or three attempts to get through all of them. Then you're going to tightly roll them into a spiral. First cut the stems off. The stems will get added to the salad, but it's easier to chop this way. Now from this tight spiral, you want to cut this into one eighth to a quarter inch strips. Pick a thickness similar to the grated beet bottoms. That's so quick and they look so nice. These get added to the bowl as well. For the stems, you want to chop them finely and add those to the bowl as well. Now I'm going to finish cutting the remaining tops. For the herbs, you want to wash and dry them in the same way. 
Before chopping, you want to reserve some dill and mint for decorations. Grab a couple pieces of dill, break off just the nice leaves, and put those on a plate. Now you want to separate all of the mint leaves from the stems. The easiest way to get all of the leaves off in one go is just to pull down the shaft, and all the leaves come with you. After you've separated all of the mint leaves, you want to find 15 of the nicest, smallest, twinkiest mint leaves that you're going to save for the final presentation, kind of like the go-go dancers in the window, luring you into a delicious toss salad. Add all of the dill and all of the parsley into one big pile. You're going to chop this very fine, so first rough chop it so it sits a bit more flat, and then cut it in a grid shape. This looks like it's going to be a lot of work, but it's going to go very quickly. You want to mix everything up between each set of chopping. You want this fine texture so it blends nicely into the salad. It really only takes a minute if you chop it in this grid method. Throw all the chopped herbs into the salad bowl. For your final assembly, you're going to need all of the salad components, toasted pistachios, your chopped herbs, and your salad dressing. And you want to start by adding about half of the salad dressing to the salad, and you'll add more depending on what it needs as you taste it. Now toss the salad. Give this a quick taste and see how you want to adjust the flavors. It's really good, it's really herby, but it needs something more to keep cutting through it, so I'm going to add some more salad dressing. I'll probably use the rest of this jar. Salad dressing, salt, and pepper are things you can always add more of, but you can't take them away. So I recommend starting with a little bit and keep tasting and changing to see what you like. Once you're happy with the salad, you feel like you're in a committed long-term place with it, you can lose your gloves because you're no longer at risk of getting beet stains anywhere. Now you can top with your toasted pistachios. The red from the beets kind of takes over all of the green in the dish. So adding the pistachios not only brings crunch, but a little bit of color and pop. And the herbs just add a really nice color and help people know what flavors are in the dish. So the real question here is, how does this taste? I've got a bite here with a top, a bottom, and some nuts. This is so tasty. It has a family-friendly texture of coleslaw with the pizzazz of a pride parade. It's really bright and refreshing from all of the different herbs and from that tang from the sherry vinegar. This is a great make-ahead to take to summer barbecues because it's going to stay crispy for a couple of days in the fridge. Pride Month is all about accepting yourself and other people. It's not about unconditional love, but it's knowing that you are worthy of love for who you are with all of your faults, with all of the parts society sees and all of the parts society doesn't. I hope that you make this dish. I hope that you love it. I hope that you love yourself and hope you have a happy Pride Month. It's probably worth sharing.